First, we're going to go over the review worksheet. It's a little bit easier than the pedigree analysis, so I really do recommend doing this one first. Although, you should have be already finished with both if you're looking at this video. So, we see here that we have some mating between relatives, those two double lines show that, and that they both have a recessive trait that they've passed their children. First thing we want to look at is whether it's autosomal or sex linked. So, we want to see if both males and females are affected by this trait. And we have three males and two females that are affected, so we know that it's probably autosomal. The pedigree is also probably recessive because Parents three and four in generation two are not affected, except but they have two children that are affected. So we know that that's probably recessive. Another example of this is in parents one and two in generation two have a child that is also affected. So unaffected parents having affected offspring shows me that this is probably a recessive trait. Now to determine the genotypes of all the individuals, since I know it's a recessive trait, I am going to first write the ones that I absolutely know right off the bat. And the easiest ones for me to determine here are um, going to be the ones that have the trait. So let me get that out of the way. All right, so that's going to be number eight. It's going to be little a, little a. Number two, it's going to be little a, little a in generation three. Number three in generation three, and numbers one and two. Okay, because we know this is a recessive trait, and in order to have a recessive trait, you need to have two recessive alleles. Okay, the other ones that I can figure out are the ones that have kids. So I'm really not going to be able to figure out these or these, this one or this one, definitively at least. Um, if a parent has an affected child, but the parent themselves do not have the trait. We know that both parents have to be heterozygous. You can do a Punnett square out to, to prove that fact. Okay, same with these two parents. That's an A. Sorry, not the best at drawing on the computer. Okay, and then we know at least one of the parents in each case, um, either one or two, has to be heterozygous, and either three or four has to be heterozygous. But one could be homozygous dominant, and we don't really know which one's heterozygous and which one's homozygous. So I'm going to leave those blank. So those are all the genotypes you can figure out. Now let's move to the second part, which is pedigree B. Again, it's asking if it's autosomal or sex-linked, so I'm going to look and see whether it's males or females that have the trait. And in this case, we have both again. So we have three males and four females, so it's probably autosomal. Now we want to determine whether it's dominant or recessive. So in order to do that, I want to see if there's any unaffected parents that have affected children. So here's two unaffected parents, and their child is not affected. Um, it's not really definitive, but we can use some other clues to tell us that it's probably dominant. One of those clues is that it appears, the trait appears in every generation. There's at least one shaded individual, one person with a trait in every generation. One here, three in generation two, and three in generation three. So this is, again, probably a dominant trait. Um, and we could write out the genotypes to help us do that, which it asks us to do in number three. So again, anyone with a shaded allele has to have at least one capital letter. We don't know if they're heterozygous or homozygous, so I'm just going to write one capital letter. We know they have another one, but we don't know what the other one is, so I'm just going to write one. And then anyone who is not shaded is going to be homozygous recessive. I'm not going to write those out, but anyone who's not shaded needs to be homozygous recessive. Now, in order for um, parents one and two in generation one to have an unaffected child, which would be number three, Parent one has to be heterozygous. We know that parent one is heterozygous. Um, same here for parent two in generation two to have an unaffected child, which would be number one in generation three. She has to be heterozygous. Okay, we don't know. We know that these are all recessive. Um, again, for parent five in generation two to have an unaffected child, he has to be heterozygous. And for parent seven to have an unaffected child, 
he, she has to be heterozygous. So we know that they're all heterozygous. Um, and those are all the ones we can figure out. Um, we can only figure out one allele for numbers 2, 3, and 5 in generation 3, but we know that the rest of the unshaded individuals all have only recessive alleles. So that's what you should have written for your worksheet, and make sure you make those corrections and that you write down any questions that you have.